Alright guys, this is the ultimate beginner's guide for house music producers using FL Studio. This is the second episode. By the end of the five episode tutorial, we will have made this. This episode is about music composition. We're basically going to be making the first beat. Where we left off is pretty much right here, if you believe it, pretty much nothing. As you can see, our project file is empty. There's nothing going on. So today we're going to start with sound selection. Sound selection is everything, especially when you're making a specific genre of music. So today we're making house music. If you choose dubstep sounds for house music, it's not gonna sound good. The same way that if you use house music sounds, you can't make dubstep. Theoretically you can, but it just won't sound right. Now, if you are really a beginner with FL Studio, FL Studio comes with these stock packs that are pretty good, to be honest. If you go into packs, then drums, you've got all these symbols. I recommend looking between the 808, 707 and 909. They are classic. Then you also have here the legacy your drums and you go vintage. Here are some really good sounds. These claps are great. Kick is pretty okay as well. Now, we're gonna be using our own sample pack, which is linked in the description down below. It's called Contraband. We're gonna be using it for this tutorial. Let's drag our tempo down to 128. So we got our Contraband pack. We're gonna go down to the kicks here. We're gonna be using kick 24. All right, now you can see the kick doesn't perfectly align with this whole segment. You see the empty space behind there? This is one beat. And this is one bar. A bar is made out of four beats. Therefore, if I press play right now, you, you, you hear the metronome. That was four clicks, right? And the kick is supposed to go on every click, but you see it's kind of annoying. It doesn't perfectly align with that grid right there. There's a very simple solution. We're gonna go on this snap to grid button here, click on it and then press none. We're gonna select the edge, the very end of the sample there and drag it out. Now remember in the previous episode, I explained that if we have stretch audio enabled, we're stretching the actual sound, which we do not want. So let's undo that. We wanna make sure this is toggled off so that when we drag, we're dragging empty space you see now it perfectly aligns to the grid so we're gonna duplicate that over and get four on the floor let's drag in a clap gonna use clap 19 for this I quite like the way that sounds you can already see how what I was saying about sound selection being so important playing into effect here. With just a kick and a clap, we have a nice sound. The next thing we're gonna add is a hat. And same trick here, dragging it without stretch mode on just so we can get it perfectly aligned to the grid. I'm going to lower the volume of these hats just ever so slightly by going to this little dot here in the middle and dragging it down. That's gonna visually and actually reduce the volume by three decibels here. However, if I undo that, another way to do it is to double click, open the sound here and just drag the volume down like so. I'm gonna go ahead and put all of these sounds into the mixer, right? Which is when we double click and press track, it automatically assigns a mixer track insert here. So five is now assigned with the kick. I do the same to the clap. Six is now assigned to the clap. If I do the same with the hat, seven is now assigned with the hat. Very nice. Next thing we're gonna do, go into top loops. Drag in a nice little top loop here. Now, this is not aligned tempo wise. Let's take a look. Sounds fine, right? But what if I turn on the metronome? Remember when I said in the previous episode, tempo is everything. If I do not go ahead and fix this right now and just kind of think, well, it doesn't match up. So let me just cut that last bit and voila, our problem is fine. Take a listen what happens when I press play. It doesn't sound right here at the end. If you can't hear the issue, then it's it's a you problem uh, because it's definitely an issue. So we're gonna go ahead and undo everything we've done. And you see, it doesn't line up, but as well as that, you can simply see on the grid, it doesn't line up. That's half a beat. This is supposed to be on that half beat. 
So we're gonna go back, press none again on snap to grid, none. And now we're going to be using the stretch mode, all right? We're going to stretch this until our liking. Et voila. Another way to do it is if we just double click this sample, all right, we can analyze, we can see 126. Now that is because I've said, I've named the sample 126, which is to signify that it is in 126 beats per minute. Our project file is 128, which is why this is slower. Therefore, it lasts longer. See, now if we press this little icon here on the left of the name, it's going to drop down this menu. And then if we go ahead and go to fit to tempo, it's going to give us another menu here. It's going to estimate an incorrect BPM. That's fine. But we're going to go ahead in here and press type in BPM. And we're going to press 126 because we know it's exactly 126. There's a slight issue here, but that's all right. We're just going to cut that off. That this should be exactly correct. And that is indeed exactly correct. Remember, we're going to double click and press track to assign it to a track. It's a very fundamentally basic house music beat. Got our track one, two, three, and four here. And in the mixer, we've got insert five, six, seven, and eight. Maybe that's killing your OCD a little bit. FL Studio has assigned one, two, three, and four to what's already in the pattern. If we go unsorted, you can see here the original kick, clap, hat, and snare that were in the previous tutorial. They have already taken up one, two, three, and four. Now, before we continue, make sure to save your project file. We're gonna press Command S, gonna press Save As. So we've got our basic drum composition together. Let's move on to the melody and bass composition. We're gonna open our channel rack for pattern one, which is blank. Here's where I'm gonna put you guys onto another cheat code. It's called Rave Generator. It's fully free. You can find it linked in the description of this video. It is honestly the place to get amazing sounding synths that you need for house music. Once you open it up, go ahead and just close this thing called the Landlord's Tab. And when you go into Stabs here, we're gonna be using this one called the Hit House, but there's many cool stabs in here you can use for other productions. That already sounds sick. You can close that. I'm gonna introduce you guys to the piano roll. You'll have seen this before in many videos, I'm sure. But basically, when you're in your channel rack here, we're gonna go ahead and between these lines of Rave Generator 2, we're gonna press this gray area. And it's gonna open up a piano roll. Might look daunting at first, and if you don't know music theory, don't worry. Hold my hand, we're gonna do this together here. See this thing where it says C5? That's the middle. If you've set up your keyboard to be able to use the piano, when you press Q, it's gonna play that note. Right, this is just kind of middle. Just consider C5 where you gotta be most of the time. I'm gonna write you guys a little bass line. I can explain how to do it yourself, but since this is beginner, you don't have to worry about it too much right now. This you'll learn with practice. We want a beginning and an end point. I think F5 is quite a nice note to start. And I'm literally just gonna play. Right, with my keyboard. I like that already. Very simple, right? So let me press play on this. You can literally just, remember when I said, leave this on song? Now if I switch this to pattern and I press play, it's gonna play just this. I like that. We're gonna make sure we continue this. So we go. I like that as a next note. Gonna press these in. And now I'm gonna cut this one where it says three. This is one bar and this is bar two. See, so the beginning is the bar here between these big lines is the bars. So every bar is made out of four beats. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And then I want it to restart. This should end before that part. Now if I press play. If you want to check that if you've made something by yourself now, if you want to check that it works, press this metronome and take a listen. That works. What I want to do is just connect these notes up. I can just select them and drag them so they all connect. Or I can teach you guys a new shortcut if I undo that. If I press command L, they automatically attach to the next note. 
I'm gonna do something fancy here. Every second one here, I'm just gonna shorten it a little bit. So we got this. I like that. And as simple as that, we're gonna just leave it. I wanna just press play on this entire song now. So I'm gonna switch back to song and press play. And let's take a listen. Now, when I said this is a cheat code, I meant it. It just immediately makes your song sound super cool. As you can see, we've got one pattern here and then the second pattern is empty. So we copy paste that over, bam, and the full beat is there. However, what we're missing is a bass line. So I'm gonna go back into this channel rack. I'm gonna press plus again. And now I'm gonna show you guys something you can do within FL Studio without having to download anything extra. Go here into Synth Classic and just press 3X Oscillator. We're gonna go, and this looks daunting. Don't worry, I'm just gonna tell you what to do here, okay? We're gonna go into Oscillator 3 and reduce the volume down to zero. So we're only using Oscillator 1 and 2. You see 1 and 2 gonna put the course pitch of 2 down to minus 24 and the course pitch of 1 down to minus 24 as well now if I press Q you can hear it right there just a very simple sine wave we've got our little sub noise we're gonna just go on rave generator right click copy right click on 3x oscillator paste and that copies all of these notes that we've made over into this other one if I go ahead and mute the rave generator and now press play we're gonna go ahead and open the 3X oscillator now and select everything. And now we're gonna press command down and that shifts it an entire octave down. Now, if we press play on the pattern. That doesn't sound quite right. We're gonna go into the rave generator and just tune. So there's a funny phenomenon happening right here that it's hard to explain if you don't know music theory, but this synth hit is playing a chord. It's playing a seventh note as well. And because of that, without having to explain it too much, we're going to move this down seven clicks. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This synth hit is playing a seventh note and therefore we gotta pick the root note of the synth, which is seven notes below. So now that it's in the right note, we're gonna shift it down an entire octave, keeping it in the same note, just an octave down. Cause you can see A sharp still where it was A sharp four, now it's A sharp three. I like how ominous that is sounding. We're gonna put these into the mixer and we're gonna worry about that for the next episode. Let's press play on a song and let's hear what we've got. I think there's a couple more elements I would like to add. I'm gonna go back into contraband, go into Vox and see if there's any fun little things we can add. Mmm, that's fun. I'm just playing around now. That is so much fun. We're gonna lower the volume a little bit. See if we've got anything else. This one will be perfect. Again, we're gonna time stretch now. This is 135 beats per minute, which is not right. Fit to tempo, type in 135. Let's see what else we can add. Just chop that little bit. Putting everything into the mixer now, Just giving it a track. Let's see if we got some effects one shots we can add. A little crash will be fun. Alright guys, if you want to see how to turn this into an entire song and then go into the mixing and then the mastering, continue on to the next episode.